another episode of the LifeWave Advanced Training, and I'm Dr. Karen Can, and tonight we're going to talk about combining patches and some of the alternative protocols. So if you have your training manual in front of you, you'll want to refer to chapters 27 and 28, and those are pages 145 to 175. So before we begin, in case any of you don't know who I am, my name is Dr. Karen Can, and I started out in regular Western medicine as a family practitioner up in Canada and uh, had exposure to acupuncture as a child because my heritage is Chinese. And at the time, when I was a child, I thought it was a bunch of hocus pocus, so I didn't, you know, I didn't go for it. <laughs> so I went to do quote-unquote real medicine. And that did all that, and my class was fairly progressive, and so I had access to, to you know, some people, speakers that came in that were acupuncturists, and I thought, you know, I think I'll, I'll try this out. So I tried it out in residency. Uh, they, had, they had a weekend course um, for uh, medical students and residents, and, uh, you know, taught us some few things, and then I started using it in my clinical practice, and lo and behold, people got better a lot faster. So I was intrigued and hooked at that point and uh, ended up uh, when I moved to um, California and worked at UCLA teaching medical residents, um, decided to do the course for physicians so that uh, I could be better trained and be able to train my, um, my residents. And uh, then returned back to New York State and, and ended up doing acupuncture here. And in the midst of that, got uh, sick myself from burnout. Um, for those of you who are clinicians may understand burnout, uh, adrenal fatigue and burnout. So I really needed, you know, the energy healing uh, aspects um, to help me heal. And acupuncture is one of those things. And then LifeWave patches were another and partway through my healing process, another doctor introduced me to the patches, and at the time, they were just the energy patches, and I had recovered enough to be able to figure skate, which is my favorite uh, pastime, and um, within two weeks of, of uh, learning about and, and trying out the energy patches, um, I had my best performance ever in an international competition in Germany and won a gold medal for the U.S. So that was like, woo, this is pretty cool. This stuff works. So I kept experimenting with it with myself, doing the five elements, which was wonderful, the five elements energy enhancer protocol, and which is in your manual. And I also have a couple of YouTube videos on that, so you can check that out. And um, I was so... so um, you know, so impressed with them, I just kept using them and started sharing them with patients. And and um, I truly feel that, that at some point they're probably going to replace what I do as a technician, at least, in the office as an acupuncture technician. So that's my story, and we can go ahead and um, get started here on uh, today's training. Um, one of the quotes I really like is, uh, creativity is thinking up new things, innovation is doing new things. How many people do you know that think up these really great ideas, you know, they have these really great ideas, but then nothing happens, you know, they actually don't, um, they actually don't go forward with them. And here in LifeWave, you know, David Schmidt is one of these people that both have the creativity and then he went forward and did something with it. And it's benefiting, you know, um, thousands and thousands and thousands of people all over the world. So I encourage you to be one of those that know all, not only think creatively, but also are innovative as well to help others. So um, just quickly, um, we're expected that uh, you have all used the patches, and hopefully you've had a chance to use all of them at some point, just to see what that's like for you, and uh, to be familiar with the brochures and the basic patch placements in the brochures, um, and that uh, you, you also understand that most people will respond to the protocols that are in the brochures. So just because you're you know, getting advanced training doesn't mean you have to get advanced training in order to help people, in order to make a big difference in people's lives. So this is extra stuff, um, and we're hoping that you will go forth and, and teach others and, and your clients and patients so that if you have a tough case or if, if somebody is looking for more in-depth work, that you can help them. So. I'm going to bring this uh, question, first question to you, a true or false question, and you can just write in the chat box uh, what your answer is. So the question is, according to the YH brochure, glutathione and carnosine patches are not usually used together. 
but in the advanced protocols, you can use them at the same time. So go ahead and, and quickly just type in your answer to this, and we'll have uh, Lily take a look at the answers. I've got three trues and one false. Okay. So actually, the answer to this one, which is the topic of today's uh, um, training, is uh, it is true. Um, in, in the YH brochure, it does mention not using them together in at the beginning, uh, because one is, a, uh, is a, uh, a more elevating energy patch and one is a more sedating energy patch. David thought that they probably shouldn't be used together. But since that time, when they first came out, people have used them, experimented with them, in all sorts of combinations and found them to be extremely beneficial together. So uh, that's what we're going to, you know, um, some, of the, some of the protocols you're going to um, Do see Dr. Today. Karen? Hey, Dr. Steve, is uh, that your dishes clacking in the background? That might be my wife putting them up. I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> um, <a> <laughs> I'll get her to stop. I just want to say this one thing. Uh, we're now doing some studies where we're combining all the YH patches together. So. We'll have uh, two or three studies uh, completed in the next few months where mm, we're doing wonderful. all the patches together, YH at least. Thank you. Okay, so you're talking about glutathione, carnosine, and X15? Dr. Steve? Oh. I think we lost him, but, I'll, but I'll answer. I yes. know I'm here. Can you hear oh, me? You oh, hear yes. Me? Now we can. I, I said yes. The answer is oh, yes. yes. Oh, okay. Great. I, they're, they're, they're doing the dishes here. I can't pronounce the cover. <laughs> I'm going to mute myself. Okay, thanks. All right, next true or false question. So energy enhancers are not usually recommended for nighttime use, um, but you can use the ice wave at night. So the, the key word is usually. So energy enhancers are not usually recommended for nighttime use, but you can use the ice wave in the evening or at night. Well, I've got a bunch of truths popping up quickly for that. Okay, yes, so that was what I was looking for. Now, we ha do have people using energy enhancers at night because they want to do some charging up or some clearing of certain blocked areas, and it doesn't disturb their sleep. Uh, for example, I seem to be able to sleep uh, while using them, but um, clearly there are other people that cannot sleep if they have them on. I have a story of a, a gynecologist friend of mine. For some reason, he decided to use energy enhancers on liver three. He used the same patch for three nights just to see what would happen. And he said, well, you know, for three nights, I didn't sleep well. And I said, well, why'd you put it on for three nights? He goes, well, I don't know. I just figured I'd, I wanted to see how long it lasted. So <laughs> for him, they lasted three days, the energy enhancers. And, and I do have patients that use the ice wave at night very successfully, even though they cannot drink or hydrate in the evening. Uh, but that's because that's when their pain is. So, you know, you can do that. You can experiment with this kind of stuff. So here's the next, uh, the last true or false question. The SP6 complete works better when there is a positive patch, for example, a white patch, such as glutathione, on the right side of the body to balance it. So the SP6 complete works better when there is a positive patch on the right side of the body to balance it. I've got three trues, Elaine, Heidi, and David, and Tammy, fourth, also okay. true. Okay. Well, we believe, for the most part, it's, it's true. Now, some people, like myself, we can just use the SB6 complete alone, and it works very, very well. Um, however, theoretically, because it's a negative patch, it's always nice to have the balancing patch on the other side so you complete a circuit. Um, so a lot of times we encourage people to, to, to use the glutathione with the SB6 complete, not only for the energetic balancing, but also because of the action of the glutathione in helping with weight loss, because um, a lot of weight stays on people because they have toxins stored in their fat. So yes, that's very good. Okay. Uh, last quiz, I think, before the next section here. Which of the following some statements? Of us have actually, some of us actually have pure fat. Pure fat? Pure fat. <laughs> yeah. It's all been purified. Pure non-toxic fat. Well, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> so the patch combining quiz, which of the following statements is the most accurate? A, never use patch combinations other than those described in the brochures or the training manual under any circumstances. Or B, when using patch combinations, it is best to muscle test for the most effective placements, especially if you're experimenting with placements beyond what is written in the brochures 
or the training manual. I've got Heidi, David, Elaine, and Tammy all saying B. B, yes, that is correct. And again, that is why you're here tonight. Okay, so case study. Have you ever noticed that you guys are doing most, most of the work here? <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a case study uh, on this woman named Alice. So just pretend a member of your downline who has had great success herself with the patches has a new prospect on the phone named Alice. And Alice is on a three-way call with you, and um, she was recently diagnosed with lupus. So Alice asks you, as her healthcare, you know, as as a healthcare provider on this three-way call, so what patches should I use for my lupus? So what's the first thing you should say to Alice to answer her question? And and we actually want to hear it verbally. So if you want to raise your hand, and then Lily can unmute you. So what's the first thing you should say to Alice when she asks you that? What patches should I use for my lupus? I see answers popping up in the chat area here. Elaine, do you want to um, raise your hand or I'll try unmuting you. Let's see if you have your mic set up. Go ahead. You're unmuted. Elaine. Hi. This is uh, Lenny, uh, Elaine's uh, husband. She had to go to sleep a little early tonight. Uh, but whenever anybody brings up a disease, as we've been told so many times, uh, these patches are designed to help symptoms, not specific diseases. Excellent. Thank you very much, Lenny. Yeah. So I know it seems to be, you know, drilled in, you know, <laughs> and that's good. That's good. So everybody's done their job, and and so that's exactly right. So the first thing we want to say is, is exactly what Lenny said. You know, what with Lifeway, we don't claim to cure or treat any diseases. So would you mind telling us what symptoms you have? Because maybe we can help your symptoms. And so you could say it in a nice way um, and uh, just kind of deflect the, the disease name. So a little bit more about Alice. She's about 35 years old. And thank you very much, Lenny, for that answer. Um, so she complains about being tired all the time. And she, always, she also worries about her organs being damaged by lupus. Um, apparently she's been doing some reading. And um, she has complaints of uh, pain in her muscles and joints, and sometimes different ones. And her doctor told her she was just a mild case, so that was good. So assuming that her doctor is OK with her using patches, uh, number one, what patches would you recommend? And number two, which would you start first, or would you start them all at once? So this is not an absolute right or wrong you know, um, answer. It's just to get discussion going and um, to see what your opinions are, and then I'll give you my two cents on that. So if you want to um, raise your hand again, and we can take whoever wants to contribute their thoughts to this case. Which patches would you recommend, and which would you start first? OK, Tammy, I see your answer there in the questions pane. I'm going to unmute you to see if you have your mic set up. Go ahead, Tammy. I think we should look at using at least glutathione to help her detox, maybe and energy and ice wave and mm -hmm. maybe start with ice wave first um, just to get her more comfortable mm -hmm. and then after that after that um, maybe try introducing the glutathione see how she reacts mm -hmm. um, and see how her detox symptoms go and then adding in the uh, uh, energy okay good thank you very much Excellent. Um, so again, no absolute right or wrong answer. I mean, Tammy pretty much um, said what I uh, very close to what I would do. I think the nice thing about the patches, especially with a new person, is that you can you'd really want to demonstrate that something is happening right away. So the ice wave would really be, I would say, for myself, um, the first thing I would do just to demonstrate, hey, guess what? This has an effect. Some of the other patches may take a little bit longer for you to see the effect, especially the the YH patches, um, but, um, you know, I would go and get, you know, get her out of pain first, get her out of discomfort. Um, as far as the, the second one that I would do personally, um, she definitely worries about, you know, the, her organs and, def, you know, the YH has been shown both carnosine and glutathione to help with uh, organ function. Um, my concern would just be, you know, overall what's her, you know, her health, um, how, you know, how healthy she was before she got the, the lupus. So I would start the YH relatively 
short periods of time and just to make sure she didn't get too tired or had too many detox symptoms, which we'll discuss a little bit later. So I might be tempted to see, you know, ask her what's more important to her. You know, her theory about, you know, of, is her organs being damaged or, you know, get, you know, feeling tired. If she says, well, gee, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather work on the tiredness first, I may actually want to start the energy patches after the ice wave for a week or two and then add in the YH. So any questions or comments on that, you can either um, type them in the chat or um, raise your hand. Not seeing anything just yet. But okay. Heidi has her hand up. Let me, uh, let me try Heidi here. She's got a question. Okay. Go ahead, Heidi. You're unmuted. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, question I have, I've read the um, master um, acupuncturist um, brochure. And basically what it says is that the patches dredge the meridians, and then they do that all, the, all day long. Now, do all of the patches dredge the meridians or just the ice wave? It sounds like that would also help is make sure that her meridians are flowing uh, smoothly and, and therefore her body will heal itself. So is that just ice wave? It wasn't well, clear. Or less, don't remember because it's been a while since I've read that. Uh, it's like a little talking book. Uh, this is is this in your back office the the life wave experience one by um, Peter Ragnar, or is remember. it the one from Taiwan? Yes, I think it's from yeah another country. Oh, okay, it yeah, I, I know it's not an official life wave book, so I may not have read through that, so I'm not familiar with that particular term, and maybe Dr. Steve could answer this uh, a little better because he's done a lot of the science uh, background on it. Um, but I believe all the patches do some sort of energy flow or increase energy flow to a different degree, though. Um, mm -hmm. I know for some things I use, uh, um, for example, for brain patching, I used somebody, uh, sorry, I used uh, energy enhancers on someone, worked very well, um, and it didn't, the ice wave didn't work for that particular case uh, when I tried to replace it with the ice wave. So I think there, I think the minute you put the patches on the body, there is, a documented energy movement there. But as far as the word dredging and, you know, the degree of energy movement, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that specifically. That would be a, a probably a Dr. Steve or David question. I'll send it to you, Karen. I think I have it, but I, I haven't read through it, so <laughs> if it's, is it a red book? Okay. No, it's a, it's a e-book. Oh, okay. No, then I don't have it. Then I don't it's have it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I get sent so many things, but thank you. Yeah, so we'll take a look at it. Okay, so if you turn to page 145, so thank you, Heidi, for that. Um, now, you already know the, the clock protocol, or the Haltingwanger Cross is the other older name for it, on how to use the ice wave patches to treat pain. Well, a lot of people want to use the energy patches and the ice wave together, and here's just an example on one page 45 of how you can do that. Um, and I'm showing this just because it's kind of an easy one to, to remember. Kidney one on the bottom of the feet is uh, so just a universal um, you know, kidney point, and it's something we don't end up needling for obvious reasons in acupuncture because it would hurt. <laughs> so it's a great place to put the, the patches, and I like this spot because it's very grounding. Liver three is also very grounding, so I use that a lot as well. The kidney one is very grounding, and so you've got energy shooting up through, you know, the, the whole body. And then you can use the clock protocol on whatever area it is that it's hurting you. So in this particular picture that's in your book, um, it's the knee. So this, uh, in this particular example, um, they did, you know, um, the patches basically bracketing the knee. But you can do the whole clock protocol. And we've had people do even two sets of ice wave and one set of energy enhancer. Um, for if they have, you know, two specific localized areas of pain. So um, one thing you want to do uh, if you have someone that you're working with is you may want to muscle test them to see if those are the best placements for energy enhancer and ice wave. And uh, Christine Fisher, I believe, will be doing more uh, with you on muscle testing. So I'm not going to go through that in detail here. So this is supposed to make you laugh, but this is a picture of me hanging off my chin-up bar. And uh, when I have time constraints and I'm trying to figure out whether the 
six you know sets of patches that I have on usually uh, daily are compatible with each other because sometimes I like to experiment like David does uh, with different patch combinations I just go by my chin-up bar and I hang with one arm and if I can hang with one arm which is relatively difficult believe it or not despite what the movies show you um, I know that my patch combination is strong so because I have the strength to, to hang from one arm so I do it with both arms, and sometimes uh, one arm will be stronger than the other, and I'll have to make a little adjustment uh, with the patch and um, with the patch location, and then it'll even out. So I'm not uh, recommending that you necessarily use this particular method, but I just wanted to share with you uh, what I do—a little secret that you know. This is what I do um, when I'm when I'm just quickly testing my patches, and I have noticed that if I don't hydrate. Um, before putting my patches on um, that I won't be able to hang either so that's very important and one of our um, gold medalist winning bobsled uh, athletes uh, Ethan um, came up with a really cute idea I thought since he can't always muscle test himself or isn't confident muscle testing himself he got this little thing called a grip strength dy dynamometer now this is a fancy one, uh, this picture I'm showing you, but there are cheap ones that you can get on eBay for like 6 or $10 US. And what basically you squeeze it and it figures out how hard you squeeze. Now because you're not trying to do an exact test here, um, it doesn't matter if it's a cheap one because all you're looking for is relative strength. So if you squeeze and you get a 20 and then you put your patches on and wait a few minutes and then squeeze again and you get a 40 or a 30, then you know, aha, you know, my strength is increased, then, um, you know, then I'm probably, this is probably a good patch combination for me. So this is what Ethan uses to test himself. You can fact, also use a mm -hmm. cat. You can squeeze a cat and if it tries <laughs> to bite you, you know, you squeeze too hard that your strength increasing. <laughs> I don't know if anybody would want to do that. That's mean. <laughs> well, I thought you know it was really funny when Ethan was showing this to my friend Marie and I. We, we we thought it was a great idea, and so I said, "Well, what are you squeezing right now?" And he says, "Well, I just had a massage. I squeezed a 70 before the massage, and then 80 after the massage." I said, "Wow, really?" I said, "That's amazing." And I said, "Can I try?" So he gives it to me, and I squeeze, I squeeze, I squeeze. And he goes, well, what'd you get? I said, 15. <laughs> and he starts laughing. <laughs> and I'm like, look. And he says, is that your dominant hand? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Marie squeezed like a 50. <laughs> She's a massage therapist. So clearly, clearly the massage therapists are stronger than us acupuncturists sometimes. OK. So um, on page uh, 146 to 148, uh, here is an example of how to combine the energy enhancers with the YH. So the YH meaning, you know, either glutathione or the carnosine in the future. That'll also be the X15. So they, you have three options there in the manual for combining these two. Um, the the one on the tip of the finger is a little tricky, I have to say, but Kim Claver just swears by that. She loves that. Now, what I want you to note here, though, is not necessarily that you have to memorize these options, uh, although they've been tested by other doctors, but that they actually create what I call an energetic triangle. And that's kind of an easy way um, to, you know, if you're using uh, energy enhancer and YH together um, to combine them. So you're going to use energy enhancer on each limb or you know you're, it's one on each side and then if you use the YH on a center point um, on a CV point uh, generally they're used in the front although some of the some of the protocols use them on the back as well then you really can't you really can't go wrong again if you have if you can muscle test great uh, if you can't this is usually an easy way to uh, to wear them so an energetic triangle here there's a picture where the glutathione is on top and then the uh, the energy enhancers on uh, either arm or leg, and then uh, and then the opposite where you have the energy on top and the glutathione or the carnosine uh, lower down, probably on the belly area. Um, if you have a question, you can write that in the question. Lily, did you want to check if there are any questions about those two sets of combinations? Probably not. Okay, so let's move on. So we have uh, on page 149, you can turn to that in your manual as well. 
Um, notice this is just um, a very simple combination of using SP6 Energy Enhancer and YH. So um, most commonly we use the glutathione with the SP6, so wherever you put the SP6, you can just match it, match that point with the other side with the glutathione. So in this particular picture, although it doesn't look green, um, the left side is supposed to be the SP6 complete, and the right side of the leg on the shin is the glutathione. Uh, Dr. Karen, mm -hmm. <clears throat> several other places are putting uh, energy, if you'll point to lung one, uh, energy patches mm -hmm. on lung one. Here, let me get my pen here. Oops. Okay, that's good. That would Highlighter. Work. That's a big highlight. Okay, let me go back to the drawing term. Okay, so lung one here. Yeah, lung one. You can. Yeah, there you go. And you can also put a uh, old CB17, a glutathione. Mm-hmm. And one that most people don't know about is going down here to the groin, groin, G-R-O-I-N, mm -hmm. about four inches over from the midline, uh, about four inches down, about four inches over. That's a little hot, too low, a little too higher. Low. Oh, uh, so it's above the anterior. Yes, it's it's about a little bit, about four inches down from the umbilicus and four inches over. Okay, so four inches down, about four inches over. There you go, right there. Okay. Put mark those energy patches there. Ooh, I like that. And you uh -huh. can put a glutathione or X15 on the belly button. On the if belly button. To, yep. If you want to do a Tesla effect, you can use a. Um, X15 or glutathione on CB17, uh, so you can, ha there's different combinations, but this is actually good for people that have abdominal discomfort and menstrual issues mm. of different types, that have, they have problems where they have pain at certain times of the month. That has been a very good location for a lot of people that have those kind of conditions. So, yeah, so the bloated belly, uterus stuff, um, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So this is the glutathione or the X15, right? Right. And then these two Ener are the energy patches. Right. And then okay. if you want to, you can throw another patch up here on CV17 and see how that does. And you could muscle test to see whether you're getting, needing the additional patch or not. But, you know, that, that gives you several other options for addressing. The, now, the top points, the, the lung one and CV17, is often very good when you're having some congestion in your chest. Mm, yeah, that, that's a very nice triangle there. Now for this one, Dr. Steve, um, right on the belly button. See, that, see, that would annoy me, but so can we put it just slightly below or slightly above? Have other points. You could go to CV8 above the belly button a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so you, you kind of right in there. That, so you could go a little bit above the belly button on CV8. Okay. That would also be acceptable. Okay. I'm gonna stop. Mm, nice. Very nice. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so uh, here's the other point. If you can reach this on yourself, now I've gotten pretty good at doing this. I've had some practice, um, but this is another great point. I really like to use the energy patches on while I have the SP6 and the glutathione on. Um, so this point, the bladder 23. So do we? I don't know if we do. We have any other acupuncturists on the on the line here? If you do, if you want to share with the class um, the importance of bladder 23. Can chat that in the box. Um, how you find this one is like where the um, the the space between L2 L3 spinous process. If you go over basically one muscle belly, this is like your erector spinae muscles down here. There's like one group here, and there's another group down here. Oops, sorry for my curvy lines here. But um, on this muscular person, you can kind of see it's like one group over, and um, this is uh, bladder 23, so you put white on the right, tan on the left. And how you can find it is a lot of people find it by just feeling for kind of the bottom of the, the last rib over here, and then that's, that's the spinous process that they, they go over one. Or the way I do it is I, I feel the top of the iliac crest here, go over here, and then count one, two spaces and then one muscle group over. That's how we find bladder 23. Um, so questions on this, anyone? Well, I, just, I want to make a point. You can also put a glutathione on the right side 
and a carnosine on the left side, and that people have had issues with uh, uh, their kidneys discomfort and other problems. That has been helpful for some people. So Ooh, using that same nice. point, glutathione, and then carnosine on the same point on the other side. Oh, great. Yep. So glutathione, because glutathione is relatively more positive than the carnosine. Right, so glutathione here, and then that's carnosine. That's my opinion, here. but not David Schmidt. <laughs> we have well, a difference of opinion. Oh, you have a difference of opinion? Oh, okay. That, I, that, for some reason, I thought that was true. Maybe I made that up. Well, but. well, he and I got in, we didn't have an argument about it, but we got in a long discussion about it today. And he says, I don't know if that's right. I said, Well, I think it might be. Anyway, so David doesn't believe that, but he still accepts the alternate placements. <laughs> he just has okay. a different explanation. He just has a different explanation about why you could use it there. Uh, okay, okay. All right, so let's see. Whoops, I lost my clicking ability here to go to the next slide, but there we go. Okay, so um, new section. When patches don't work, uh, when someone's not responding to the patches, and the easiest one to tell, of course, is the ice wave because it's usually so immediate, some of the reasons could be. So choose all of the correct answers. Number one, they are not hydrated enough. Number two, they have significant nutritional deficiencies, uh, namely mineral deficiencies. Number three, their brain hemispheres are not balanced. Number four, their autonomic nervous system, or their ANS, is dysregulated or blocked. And number five, all of the above. So if you want to write your guesses into the chat. I've got Heidi, David, Dirk, Tammy, and Lenny all saying five. Yes, yes, that is that is the correct answer we were looking for. And by the way, I did not get a chance to um, to shift these. Uh, um, there were some words I needed to change on this slide, Dr. Steve, which I forgot to do before today's uh, lecture. So, so bear with me here a little later when we use some brand names. But um, I just thought of that. But we're actually going to go through the latter two here, number three and number four, because that may be new to some of you unless you happen to follow my blog. Um, where I, I recently did a, a YouTube video on that and a, a blog post on that. So what we're going to be showing you is what is called a brain neurology test. It's a muscle test um, developed by Dr. Robert Stashko. And he is, uh, I believe, a chiropractor. And he's pretty much taken uh, all almost all the available applied kinesiology muscle testing courses there are on the planet uh, over the last you know, a couple decades, and came up with this uh, very, very simple two-part test to help us decide instead of just you know someone's uh, you know polarity off, uh, but whether they their autonomic nervous system is blocked or whether they have a right and left hemisphere brain imbalance, and it really makes a difference if you correct somebody that has this imbalance, their healing rate just skyrockets, and in fact, um, a couple weeks ago we discovered this. Uh, in our training, there was a, a woman who came in with um, with pain in her shoulder, and she was a friend of mine, and she was using ice wave patches, and she said, I can't get these things to work. And I said, well, come on in during lunch and let my assistant patch you, and then if she can't do it, I'll do it. So my assistant just tried every single way she could, and, and all the protocols we knew, and it didn't work. So I came in, and I did it. And after a couple of tries, I thought, you know, I said, you're not responding. So I checked her brain balance. And uh, sure enough, she was way off, way, way, way off. And so I said, can I do something? Can I, can I put patches on your head? She goes, sure. So we stuck patches on her head, energy patches. We balanced her out so her brain testing was then normal with the patches on the head. Then I repatched her with the ice wave on her shoulder, and immediately she felt the pain starting to go away. And that just shows you, wow, you know, this stuff is actually pretty important. And she had hydrated already. She was on Himalayan crystal salt. She was on everything that I told her to be on. She was on glutathione already, you know. So um, this was a very fascinating uh, discovery for, for our team. So that's why we're sharing it today uh, for you, uh, to you. So we're actually going to go to a video now. Um, times that we've done video, it's either worked well or not so well. So. What I'm going to do is we're, I'm going to be showing you a YouTube video, and Lily's going to put the, the URL in the chat. So if you don't want to listen to me and you want to just listen to me on the YouTube, that's fine. But I'm going to walk you through the YouTube video um, because uh, sometimes it's a little bit choppy. 
So um, I know it's going to be a little bit like a Chinese kung fu movie, where uh, you know my mouth will be moving on the video, but what I'm saying is not exactly the same. So bear with me. So when you're on YouTube, you may want to just um, you know, bookmark it so you can refer back to the video. Okay. So here I am, and I'm just explaining. Uh, it's you know, it's really funny. James is. Uh, He's just like sighing. <laughs> you know, he's like, this is our second take because you know, the first one was too long. So he's trying to be patient here. Anyway, um, so here I'm explaining that uh, checking someone's brain neurology can be really helpful if they're not responding to therapy, including patches or any other type of therapy, medications, massage, that sort of thing. And so having a brain imbalance um, is like the right and left sides of the brain are not, so the energy going through the sides are not equal. And um, a lot of people actually can electronically measure the hypothalamus as the organ that's not in balance. And that's a very, very important organ that regulates many different functions in the body. So here I'm describing about the autonomic nervous system. The balance between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous systems, it should be fluid, you know, up and down, up and down, back and forth between the two. But in a lot of us, myself included, we tend to stay in the sympathetic or fight or flight a little too long. So, you know, some people drink caffeine every morning, so they're already in sympathetic overdrive. And then they get stressed out at work, and then they're still in sympathetic overdrive. So it's almost like, you know, having your, um, uh, your foot on the gas pedal all the time, and that's not good. And so your autonomic nervous system can really get dysregulated. And if you've ever been to a, uh, in a car accident and had head trauma, um, that can also you know, dysregulate you. So here I'm describing that for this muscle test, you'll want to sit to the side of the person or stand to the side of the person so that their energy centers are not uh, directly facing yours. So for those of you that know Reiki, so they're not directly facing yours. Then you want to check that uh, you have a test muscle that is a good muscle to test. So when you say resist, they actually have what we call a muscle lock. And Christine will teach you more about what that's about. So I'm also describing that in a strong man like James, you may want to put your hand over the wrist. And when you say one, two, three, resist, you should get a lock, which I did right there. Um, in a child or uh, a woman, you may want to put your hand more uh, closer to the shoulder area, so maybe on the elbow, so you don't push down too hard and overcome them, because you can overcome anyone if you push it too fast or quick. So give him a warning before you do the muscle test. So now we have him localizing the right hand over the right brain, and we say resist, so get ready and resist, and he's pretty strong there. So that's the first part of the brain neurology test. Now we do the left side, and we say resist. Oh, not so strong there. Asked him how he felt, and he said he felt a little bit of pain, actually, in the shoulder. He definitely was weaker. So we're checking again, and you can tell very obviously that he's lost the lock in his left shoulder, which he previously had. So again, we've localized over the right brain, over the, over the left brain, and both should be strong. And you can do this with the other hand if you want. Um, but we just chose this particular one. This is the one I uh, use the most. And you definitely want to find a muscle that will lock. Some people don't have a good arm muscle that's strong. So I have to use their leg muscle. OK, so we're going to do the next test here for the autonomic nervous system to see if that's dysregulated or blocked. So he's going to find his belly button, spread out his hand, his fingers wide, and I'll do the test, muscle test. Oh, and he's super strong here, so there's no problem here. But if your autonomic nervous system is blocked, then what will happen is the arm will go down. It'll be weak. So again, big palm, so stretching your fingers out, center of your palm right over the belly button, and then you test the test muscle, which should be locked, and it's not. And if it's not, then that means that that person has a block in the regulation of the autonomic nervous system, which is a block to their healing. In this case, James was normal there. So now what we're doing is we're going to patch his head. Now, instead of doing the whole brain balancing protocol, 
with two sets of energy patches and a glutathione. I'm just experimenting here with one set just to see where the energy wants to go to do the correction. So we'll do the right side, which we know is strong. And we'll do the left side and test it out. Okay, he better, but not, not completely. I'm still able to overcome him. And uh, he said he felt a little stronger, but it, it wasn't uh, a lock. So we're going to try putting the energy front and back to see if that makes a difference, see if that direction is better. So we've got it on uh, approximately GB16 there. And, uh, and then we have it on the third eye point, 20, uh, GB24.5 in the front, so white in the front, tan in the back and have him localized over the right, which we know is already normal. Yep, and that stays strong. The left side, resist. Okay, that was better. Definitely better. Yep. So now we're going to uh, put both sets on. So the white on the right, tan on the left, and um, white in the front, tan in the back. And I'm explaining that you could also, uh, for the full brain balancing protocol, um, that, that David showed me, you can also put the glutathione, carnosine, or another white patch right on GV20, which is at the top. So we're going to test everything again. So strong on the right. Now very strong on the left. Yeah, he said he felt no pain at all. He felt super strong. So this, for both sets of patches on, was much better for him than just one set. And then we'll do the autonomic nervous system just to double check. And of course, that stayed strong. So we don't expect that to shift, but just so you can see that testing again. So uh, for, you know, if you've got to clients or people that are or customers that are far away and you suspect that they're not, you know, they're using the patches correctly, but they're not getting any results, then I would have them use this brain balancing protocol, white on right, tan on left, white in the front, tan in the back and a glutathione on top, or you can use another white patch or carnosine or the X15, and have them do that every night uh, for at least an hour. Well, however long they're, they're willing to do it. Um, I've been telling people an hour. And um, they can, of course, use them with the other patches, but, but most people don't want to be walking around with patches on their head all day long. So I think an hour a day is probably, you know, would be fine. Um, some guys say, look, I'll wear it for longer. I'll just put it inside a baseball cap and I'm like great you know it's close enough to the point that's fine so you can stick it on the inside of a baseball cap or um, the inside of a headband or even the outside of the headband and that should work so there I was just laughing because I was just thanking James as well for his participation and uh, thanking David and also Dr. Dr. Stashko okay Dr. so Karen? questions on that yeah I think Heidi has a question Heidi I'm going to unmute you Go ahead, Heidi, you're unmuted. Yeah, thanks. Um, well, when you first started doing the muscle testing and he put his right hand next to his right ear and then you tested him and then moved his right hand to his left ear, did he have mm -hmm. a patch in his hand? No, he doesn't have any pads in his, uh, patches in his hands. So just the movement of the hand is what created the weakness? Yeah, so what... Um, what this is called, I believe, and I'm not an AK expert by any means, but um, is that you're, you're localizing over the organ. So, for example, John Diamond, uh, who's the author of Life Energy, um, describes that you can, and this is what Dr. Dean does, by the way. He does applied kinesiology, or AK, where they can look at what organ in particular is out of balance by either pointing to the organ or touching the organ uh, uh, area. So, for example, on the belly, there's like a whole bunch, you know, there's bladder, there's uterus, there's, you know, pancreas, spleen, stomach, you know, and just by pushing on or, or localizing, not even pushing, just touching over that specific acupuncture point for that organ, um, you can actually create a weakness. And uh, Christine will go over that in more detail um, when you take uh, the muscle testing class with her, and it's, and it's excellent. So, um, she'll be able to... Mm -hmm, very, very. <laughs> it's very fascinating. Uh, thank you for your question. Any other questions regarding this particular test? Uh, I've got a couple comments here from David Harper. David, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, let's see here. Go ahead. Hello. Hi, David. Hi, how are you? 
Great, thanks. Thanks for being here. Thank you. What's your question? Did you have a couple comments? No, no just put some. Um, yeah, in, in uh, Pike Kinesiology, there are a bunch of different uh, therapy points, and the belly button is actually the point for yeast and fungus. Mm, cool. Very cool. Now, we don't want you know, to give the idea that we're going to make you, everyone, expert to uh, apply kinesiologists because it's not, and it's a, it's a no, fairly uh, you know, lengthy training. And, you, know, you probably have a lot more training, so which is awesome. Um, and the cool thing about this brain neurology testing is, you know, for the people that you know aren't responding or um, you know have a um, history of some sort of head trauma, and it's amazing when you ask people, when I do this test and it's off, I'll ask them, do you have a history of, of, of head trauma? And they're like, um, well, actually, when I was three, I fell off the swing and hit my head on a rock, you know, or some, you know, some, some sort of... Uh, history of that and uh, um, it was it's really amazing uh, I it's about 75 to 80 percent of people so far that we've tested uh, that that are off and uh, as soon as we get them balanced um, and you can do it a couple of different ways but lifeway patches are probably you know the one of the quickest ways to do it when you get them balanced you, you really help the person because they're just gonna self-heal a lot better in fact, I had another woman um, the other day who was not responding to ice wave patches. So I ended up checking her brain balance, and she was off uh, both, actually. The, the autonomic nervous system being off is, is really a big deal. They, these people just do not heal very quickly. So we, I patched her head with the whole brain balancing protocol just to show her how to do that. And then, again, patched her on her back, and immediately, you know, her pain went from a 5 to a 1. And when I called her a couple days later, she said that she had not used the ice wave that I had given her. She had just used the energy patches on her head and patched herself every night for an hour. She's a very compliant patient. She's great. And she said the pain just keeps going down. So even without using the ice wave patches, just balancing the brain neurology helped her body to, to figure out what to do. Um, another analogy um, the people trying to understand, well, how, you know, what is this whole blocking thing? What does it mean? One analogy I have is think of your, your nervous system as a bunch of circuits, like a circuit, um, you know, um, a circuit board, you know, with a bunch, you know, the old-fashioned type with a bunch of wires going from place to place. And at some point, the circuits, the circuit board got it basically shook, like really hard. And some of these wires popped off. And then they're either hanging free or they've popped onto some other place they're not supposed to be. So then when you send energy through it, you know, sort of like you know, putting patches on or putting acupuncture or even nutritional uh, supplements through, um, the connections aren't correct. So the body doesn't know, really know what to do. It's almost like your universal translator is broken. If you're a Star Trek fan like me, um, when the aliens come on, the, on their ship and, and you can't understand them, you put what they're saying through the universal translator and it says, hi, you know, our name is whatever, Martian A, bring, you know, take us to your leader. So it comes out in English. So I think this, this blocking thing is very, very important. Um, any other questions on this? And then we'll move on. I don't see anything else. Okay. Yep. So just as we noted before, you can use the glutathione, carnosine, or the X15 on the top of the head and uh, at GV20. And you can be, you know, uh, flexible as well. I did have one person come in who required um, one set of energy patches, one carnosine, one glutathione, and one tan patch in order to balance her out. She was a little bit more challenging than the others. But we did balance her out, though. And she got very relaxed within about two minutes <laughs> of, of the patches being on her head. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about detox or detoxification and advanced patch placements. Um, this, uh, you may want to pay attention to this particular slide, and if you want, you can even control print screen if you want a copy of it yourself, uh, if you know how to do that on your computer. Uh, this will be on your test. <laughs> okay, so which of the following is not commonly considered a detox reaction or a uh, symptom of detoxification? So 
the options are headache, fatigue, emotional shifts, skin breakouts or rash, change in bowel habits, so constipation, diarrhea, uh, nasal congestion or sinus symptoms, swelling such as weight gain from extra fluid on board, or increased energy, so which is not commonly considered a detox reaction. Tammy says in. energy, Heidi says swelling. Okay, anybody else? Dirk says increased energy, and David also says increased energy. Okay. Well, what I was going for here is actually increased energy. Um, most people, they do get that. It doesn't mean you don't get that when you detox, but just it's not considered a detox reaction or a symptom, so not something negative. So that's what I was going for here. Now the swelling bit, uh, I actually added this in fairly recently because of my own personal experiences, is that uh, every time I start a new therapy of some sort, I end up with an extra few pounds of fluid on board. And uh, my understanding is that what happens is the body goes, oh my gosh, you know, there's some new thing we, you know, we're dealing with and, and we can actually unload a heck of a lot more toxins now. So they start doing that and then the lymphatics get uh, a little bogged down with, with all the extra gunk that's coming out and may not be able to deliver it to the kidneys fast enough for you to pee it out. Um, according to some of the other holistic doctors um, that, uh, that, that have been helping me um, with other trainings, um, they have said activated vitamin B6, so activated vitamin B6 in, in higher doses, so we're talking two, three, four hundred milligrams a day, can be helpful to help quote unquote squeeze the extra uh, fluid out. Uh, that is called pyridoxal 5-phosphate, P-Y-R-I-D-O-X-A-L-5-phosphate. And you usually use it with magnesium because the, uh, the enzymes that require the B6 almost always also need magnesium. So you'll get your best response if you combine magnesium and the B6. Great. Do you have a particular dose for the magnesium, Dr. Steve? Well, it depends on the type. That's the problem. Ah. But let's put it this way. I would not use magnesium oxide or magnesium carbonate. Uh, because they don't really give you much magnesium. They're more laxatives. Right. So if you're going to use a magnesium, you need to use one of the amino acid chelates. And there are numerous ones on the market. Uh, citrate is fine. Uh, magnesium glycinate is fine. Magnesium taurate, magnesium malate. All of those are fine. I would say probably at least four magnesium pills of, of with good quality chelate. You may need it once or twice a day. Mm, okay. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Okay, so a little bit more on detox. So um, who would like to raise their hand in answering these questions? And name the organ systems primarily involved in the detoxification systems of the body. And then name the organ that seems to get involved if the above organs are not doing their job. So if somebody wants to raise their hand to fill in the blank. Don't see a hand just yet. All right, David says uh, liver, kidney, lymphatic colon, and skin. Yes, thank you, David. Yep, that's what I was looking looking at, and and uh, in Chinese medicine, skin and lung are very uh, very closely linked. Um, but what I find in practice is, and in myself and in particular, is that uh, when my lymph gets uh, overburdened and, and the, the other organs may not be doing their jobs as quickly as I would like it to, then I get skin breakouts. So sometimes I've even had to slow down how uh, often I use the glutathione because of skin breakouts, although the glutathione helps with the skin as well. Um, so it's just a matter of balancing out for your particular body um, what, what, you know, what speed of detox is the most appropriate. You don't obviously want someone completely miserable, um, but at the same time you want to do have, have some effective uh, detoxification as well. And I've got to actually using the glutathione patch on the liver 3 point of the foot as one of my favorite points because I do think that actually uh, helps uh, help things move along. 
you have a favorite yeah, I, point? That, I, just, I just want to mention, using liver 3 glutathione or white energy on that point, many people have reported they have better concentration or focus. Mm. Uh, so I'm not sure whether that's a detox reaction or, or what, but it, many people have reported that they've been able to focus better, and some kids also. Oh, liver. very nice. And then the, that liver three point um, is a very good uh, circulation point, blood, the blood chi, the blood circulation points. I love that point for my skating, for sure. I, I actually have had, uh, because of my own illness, uh, issues with muscle cramping, muscle endurance in the past. And I find when I use the energy patches or X15 or glutathione, on the liver three points, sometimes I match it with the gallbladder 41, I get really, really great. Um, you know, when I skate, my muscles don't hurt, they don't, they don't spasm on me, uh, it's just, just wonderful. Um, so that's one of my absolute favorite points. In fact, I, I, I want to vote to put that on the energy enhancer brochure, because <laughs> I, I, I love that point. Well, let's, since you're on that, <clears throat> a, a, one way of using the silent nights are using, say, liver three or kidney three, and then matching it on the other side of the other foot with the carnosine on liver three or kidney mm -hmm. three, matching up the points. Uh, so some people have had good results when they don't respond just to the silent nights. They'll they'll find if they had a carnosine on the other point, like a liver three carnosine, liver three glutathione. I'm sorry, silent night on the right, uh, or liver three kidney. Uh, I'm sorry, kidney three on the right with a, a silent night and a kidney three carnosine on the left. And an additional pearl is we're getting a lot of information from Spain for some reason where there, there are people that are not completely responding to silent nights are even better responding when they use energy enhancer in the day and silent nights at night, of course. So that's just a few points. Okay, well that makes sense, you know, getting the, the energy flow, uh, probably correcting it during the day, so the nighttime, the, the Chinese clock thing, um, you know, maybe maybe kind of priming the, the energy flow so the silent nights can work better at night. Cool. Yeah, and actually the liver three point is also one of my favorite points. Use that carnosine on the left, silent nights on the right at night. I have used that very, uh, very successfully myself. So I have uh, the next slide, um, just a, a little drawing of the lymphatic drainage of the body. And the reason I have this slide is because um, my colleague Marie McMahon and I discovered one day when I was in her massage office, and I was um, ha having one of those, wow, I think my lymph is kind of full, I'm kind of bloated and waterlogged, and my, my um, fascia is hurting, my connective tissue is tight. And I go through these periods of detox, and they're brief, but you know they're still uncomfortable. So I said, you know, can you check my lymph? Because <laughs> that's what she does. She does cranial sacral, regular massage, and of course lymph. And so she checked the the um, the rhythm of my lymph. I think that's the way I would uh, describe it. And she put her hands, uh, her fingertips, right about here, and here. And she felt for about you know a minute or so, and she said, hmm. You're right. Your lymphatic is pretty sluggish, kind of like sticky, sticky. So she did her thing up here, and um, she got it freed up, you know, using the massage technique that she uses. And then she decided she was going to uh, massage this arm because I was complaining about pain in the arm. So she massaged this arm. She rechecked these points, and my lymph got stuck again. So what I think happened is all the toxins coming out of that arm into this lymph area just overloaded it, and it got stuck again. So she said, let me try something. So we ended up putting energy patches right about here and here. And she went to the bathroom, actually. She said, I'll be back in a minute. So she came back and uh, about two, three minutes later, and she put her hands again on this area. Uh, and she said, wow, your lymph flow is wide open. She says, you put those patches here <laughs> from now on. And I'm like, but that's not my favorite energy patch placement for skating. And she says, well, put two sets of patches on it. <laughs> so that's what I started doing. Now, I haven't done this every day, but um, I've sort of felt around for a sore spot. And for me, it's kind of between, you know, kidney, uh, this kidney 27 and 26 points. So you can feel around this area. 
and feel for a sore spot. Dr. Steve was, was mentioning in our last um, conference that most people have you know, some area that's sore here. And then you can put your energy patches here. Today, in fact, I have something different. I decided I was going to put an X15 on this side and a carnosine on this side just to see what it would do. So uh, since using this, I have noticed that I have not really gotten into that really painful, stuck, you know, fascial place. Um, I, I'm not doing it every day, but I'm doing it about every other day. And sometimes I'll take my energy patches off wherever the, else they are and then put them here at night because I figure, well, if there's a little bit of juice left over in, in the energy patches, I'll just stick them here and then wear them for the rest of the night. So uh, now if over in this drawing, drawing there are other places where, um, you know, there are bunches of, of, of lymphatics. So you could experiment with these places and let us know you know, uh, what you find, whether that helps with swelling um, or whether that helps with detox symptoms and then, you know, give us some feedback on that. You know, write, you know, write me a note on my blog or something like that and let me know. Dr. Karen, if you go back down to the pelvic area, <clears throat> well, a little bit lower, I guess, uh, over to, the, yeah, over to the right, over those lymphatics right there. Mm -hmm. Uh, that would be a great spot to put energy patches on either side of the body. A little higher. Uh, yeah, right there. So again, sort of so above the, the inguinal. Pubic, yeah, right above the inguinal, inguinal ligament, I guess. Uh, it would be, uh, you know, right about the pubic line, uh, white on the right, tan on the left. That seems to help a lot of people with pelvic discomfort. That's another location. That's ah. a little lower than the first place we talked about, which is four inches down and four inches over. Okay. So uh, you can try them different places. Yeah, that sounds great. Now, do you are you using them right over the lymph nodes? Uh, that, that you sometimes can. you can feel you, people's lymph nodes, but are you talking yeah, a little you bit can. higher than that? Uh, well, right okay. about the pubic hair line. Uh, pubic over hair to line. The, okay. Yeah. Yes. That's that'll that'll cover that area. You'll hit that right right yeah right there uh, a little okay. bit to the right there right there. So about right. the end of the uh, orange right there, and then on the other side. Okay. Great. Great. Nice. Very nice. Cool. Any questions on that before we move on? Actually, I think we're, we're due for a break, aren't we, Lily? Uh, yes, we are. So okay, so when should we reconvene? I want to take five minutes, so I've got a... Uh, actually, let's go to ten after. Ten after okay, the hour. So ten after the hour. Okay, we can reconvene, and if you have any questions in the meantime, you can type them in to the question box, and we'll review them when we come back. All right, so pee break, everyone. <laughs>
Hey, Dr. Karen, I got 10 after. Okay. Okay, great. So let's continue. Um, so before I go to the next case, I just wanted to mention that uh, when we did the SP6 complete study that I noticed that with the addition of the detox 1 and 2 tablets, which I understand we can only get in the U.S. right now, um, that that people really didn't have that much of a degree of detox symptoms um, compared to when people just started the SP6 complete patches and the glutathione patches alone without the other components of the SP6 complete program. And uh, if you look at the ingredient list at sp6complete.com, it does make a lot of sense to me, especially with the Detox 1 that has a lot of, of precursors to glutathione and, and liver support in there. And so it's going to help the liver um, you know, be more efficient in detoxing. And so people should get, uh, at least in our experience, um, experience less headaches, less tiredness, less, you know, rashes, you know, that kind of thing. So that is, uh, those two detox one and two tablets are probably two of my most favorite supplements. And believe me, I've tried a lot of them, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of them. But, 
both of those have helped me with sort of general all over pain and uh, with the clarity of skin, uh, skin quality, um, and of course, you know, the uh, helping with the detox and things as well. So we did a, Dr. Steve did a good job on those two. We really enjoy those two. So thank you. So I wanted to add that in before. Whoops, we went to the next case here. So um, in this case study, um, it's just this is you know for the for the MDs, DOs, and and people that that uh, um, you know are going to make decisions for their patients. Um, uh, so, a 55-year-old man with chronic abdominal pain comes in to see you as their your their primary person, a primary health care provider. Um, this chronic abdominal pain has been getting worse over the last six months. He has a feeling of bloating, and his stools are fairly hard and small. He has one bowel movement a day. He's been on acetaminophen, paracetamol, uh, for at least 10 years. His entire belly is tender on examination, but there's no masses. He's certainly not a surgical patient. His x-rays and CT scan are normal except for the FOS, so, uh, which is our affectionate way of saying the colon is full of stool. Uh, and in addition to ice wave patches that, uh, that you might think for his pain, you feel he could benefit from energy and glutathione patches as well. So here's my question to you. How and when would you start him on the glutathione? A, immediately, daily for 12 hours a day. B, do a trial of glutathione patches for shorter periods of time, then increase as tolerated. C, after using energy enhancers to improve gut function or together with the energy enhancers. D, some other combination or some other strategy that you have. So um, pick all which you think is, is relevant here. So if you want to... Um, Again, actually, let's let's get someone um, on the line. So, if uh, you'd like to to chat with me, have you raise your hand and let's see what you think. Hello, this is me, <laughs> Lulu. <laughs> no, before you put your two cents in, Doctor Steve, we'll see if any of the other students, any of the students, want to want to put their, their strategies in and then we'll get you. I wasn't going to break up and I thought it was fun. <laughs> this is a good question. This is actually very good and, and I'll make a comment after they finish talking. Okay, great. Thanks. So nobody's nobody's brave enough to put their hand up? I don't see a hand here <laughs> yet. Oh, here. I think we got one. Okay. All right, David, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, David. Thanks, David. Yeah, I would uh, consider um, C because I would want to make sure that the gut function has been sufficiently started to be able to help move toxicities and other challenges because a slow, um, a slow bowel will help to contribute to a, deep, uh, a toxic load. Absolutely. Yeah, that that's great. I, I mean, I, this is some of the things that, again, this is more... Again, we don't expect the non-clinician necessarily to to know this, but since we have mostly healthcare practitioners on the on the on the line here, I wanted to put this case in because it's a little bit more complex. And I, I totally agree with you. I would definitely want to get the gut moving because it is one of our major major detox organs and attack. And in fact, it takes a big load off the liver and kidneys if the, if the guts, uh, you know, working. And if it's not, then everybody else is backing up. So uh, there are different ways of getting Stop the, the gut free. Mm -hmm. Dr. Karen. Yes. I asked a question about age. Did I miss anything about using energy enhancers for this particular problem with the young person? Is there a minimum age from which we would not want to do or use any patches? Is there any restrictions that did I miss any conversation about that? No, we didn't talk about this in this particular uh, one. Um, Dr. Steve, do you want to field that one as the official medical director? He has to unmute himself. Like if I have an eight-year-old patient that has um, slow bowel movements every couple of days, could this be done with them? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I would. I would. Uh, only, well, for two reasons. One is because, uh, you know, I'm the MD and, and I can do that. <laughs> um, 
Uh, and the second is, is because they're old enough to give you feedback. And I think Dr. Steve will probably agree with that. I, I, I'm sorry I was talking, but I was muted. <laughs> oh, yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, we, we usually use it for people that can communicate. Now, these are all general guidelines. Uh, have people used them on infants? Oh, my God, hundreds of times. However, you know, you, the, the, the younger a child is, the more sensitive their skin is to skin irritation. So you have a, a little higher chance of having a rash if you're using a patch with a, with a very small baby. But, uh, you know, we've never had a problem in probably nearly a million users now. So they're very safe. Uh, you have to be careful with uh, skin irritation uh, with people. And, you know, the other issue is detoxification. Uh, a lot of people use them on autistics that do not communicate very well, autistic children that can't, can't do or do not communicate very well. And so it, the, the key is observational uh, period, is observation of how is the person doing. Uh, that is the most important thing you can do is the person seems to be, you know, is smiling more, uh, you know, uh, more energetic, you know, you go in the right direction. If they're crying more or, you know, uh, upset or irritated or irritable, you know, they might be detoxing too fast. The issues you get into with toxic loads, kids are four times more sensitive to toxins than adults. I used to do a lot of toxicology back about 15 years ago, heavy, heavy duty I was in toxicology for many years because of, I lived in a polluted area of the world, and so I had thousands of patients. Almost all of them had some kind of toxic condition, so I got a very hands-on training there. But the issue is, uh, if you were starting a person like this, he might not tolerate 12 hours of glutathione. That you may have to use a shorter period of time uh, for only uh, anything from five minutes to four hours. Uh, there have been people we have that within five minutes they're starting to get sore throats or they're getting a really strong metallic taste in their mouth, which often indicates a heavy metal toxicity. Uh, if, you start, if your saliva starts taking, tasting chemically or, or ke like a chemical taste or your urine ch smell gets very odorous, uh, you might be detoxing a little too fast. So you'd have to go a little slower with that person. And usually, if, if you were going too fast with, say, glutathione and detoxing, they would have some of those symptoms she had earlier, a headache or fatigue or, you know, uh, stuffy nose or nasal congestion or, you know, some GI issues. So these are all things that you would pay attention to. Uh, but, you know, the, uh, the issue is for the uh, company is we, we try to have the, on people that can communicate. And that's just a liability issue. From that point of view, you can then go further and use your own judgment. Over. Does that answer your question? Oh, maybe you're not muted. You're maybe you're muted already. Oh yes, thank you. Okay, great. That. Awesome. Thanks, Dr. Steve. So just my next question that would be where would you place the patches? Okay, so anybody wanna wanna contribute to that? You can write it in the chat. Where would you place the energy patches to help with bowel function? Anybody write? Did anybody write it down? I uh, don't see any placements yet. Oh, here's one from Heidi. Um, elbows from that liver. Heidi, I'm gonna unmute you. That, that would be large intestine. Oh, large intestine. Mm -hmm. Elbow. Mm -hmm. So uh, something on the large intestine channel. So what's what's a very strong moving point on the large intestine channel on the arms? Right at the elbow joint. So like. For the metal element, or the five elements today was long and large intestine. And that one spot that Dr. Steve told us about that's just uh, about an inch down from that spot was very um, detoxifying, for me anyway. Okay, good. Um, I would also say large intestine four, which is on the hand, which is a very chi moving um, point. So that's the one on the web of the thumb and the first finger. That's a very popular uh, point. Um, both also clear heat. So large intestine 11, uh, somewhat 10 as well, and then large intestine 4 
clear heat. So some, some, sometimes people with constipation or hard stools um, can have uh, extra heat on board and, and that may be helpful. And then you can use it a little bit more locally over the abdomen. So the other point was, um, although I don't have a, do I have a, let me see if I, I'll go back and see if I can find that slide here so I can show it to you. Stomach 25, well, it's not the best picture here, but um, so, so stomach 25 would be on either side of the belly button here, right about here. It's another good um, spot you can use for that. And then I've actually used it lower, like, you know, this four inches over spot, you know, four inches down that Dr. Steve had mentioned before. I've used that actually uh, as well. I don't know what point that is, but um, sometimes I feel around in my belly and see what, what calls out to me. So any other suggestions, anybody, on what you would want to do to move the bowels? You may have a tapeworm. That's why it's calling out to you. <laughs> well, I was referring to my intuition, but... That's that's true. Well, I don't eat as much as I used to, so probably I'm no longer tapewormed. <laughs> All right, so in the case above, why would you want to consider using the glutathione patches in the first place? I mean, in this case, I would agree with everyone to start slow and possibly, you know, um, wait until you, you have tried other patches, such as the energy patches, getting the bowels moving, and um, so doing shorter periods of time and increasing it. But why would you want to use the glutathione patches? So here are the options. A, chronic conditions often respond favorably to the immune enhancing and detoxifying effects. B, glutathione patches have been documented to enhance organ function. C, long-term use of acetaminophen or paracetamol depletes glutathione. Or D, all of the above. Heidi and David both think it's D. That's says Dirk. Okay. Yes, so it is D, and uh, um, I actually had put in, uh, um, you know, that the person was using ibuprofen and acetaminophen as well, but it confused everyone, so I just took out the <laughs> ibuprofen. And, but definitely uh, the use of long-term acetaminophen depletes glutathione, and, uh, um, you know, the funny thing is, is in Western medicine we consider Tylenol or acetaminophen one of the quote-unquote safest uh, pain relievers out there. That's kind of how it's built. Uh, I did a review. For, I, I'm on the International American Association of Clinical Nutritionists, and I did about a three-week review on pain medication for a lecture, and I found as I was doing my review, and I wound up giving the lecture on this topic, is that all pain analgesic drugs, uh, non -steroidals, acetaminophen, paracetamol, and narcotics will deplete glutathione. Every mm. single class of uh, analgesic drugs has been found to be glutathione depleting. Wow. Okay, so we can include the ibuprofens and the and the uh, um, the naproxen sodiums and all that. Right. Some of them are more so than others, but every single class I discovered. Uh, would have a glutathione depleting effect, especially wow. people that, you know, if you go to the regular rheumatologist, uh, I, I had a neurology uh, clinic, which is what I did, and, you know, it was common practice, if you look into the standards in practice, if you have a chronic pain situation, they usually start off with saying take two, two acetaminophen four times a day. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. that's the older, now they've kind of reduced it down to three times a day. But, or, or take you know one of these newer anti-inflammatory drugs, and everybody that takes that chronically is going to be putting themselves under uh, glutathione depleting medication on, on a glutathione depleting medication, and some of these people will progress on to liver and kidney and lung and brain problems. The issues are your lung, kidney, liver, brain use a lot of glutathione to protect the organ tissues and long-term use of drugs that deplete these this glutathione will cause damage over time and you find that a significant percentage of these people will develop kidney impairment over a period of 10 to 20 years. 
Mm, wow, so sad, so sad. Well, it's hard to find people in pain who are not on some sort of pain medication on a regular basis, and, and they think nothing of it. They think nothing of it. It was actually pretty challenging to find people <laughs> not on pain medication. Uh, you know, to do our ice wave uh, pain study. So that was really uh, eye-opening for me. Just because I don't use it anymore doesn't mean that nobody else does. And I have to say, I, I, I did use a lot of anti-inflammatories um, uh, when I first started skating. And I was kind of a stress ball back then, but I liked being that way. And, and I, I, I ate it like candy. I mean, every week I had some new injury. I was in the PT office, uh, and I was on ibuprofen and, um, you know, whatever it was, uh, every, every day on a regular basis, and who knows, I mean, that may have built up to contribute to my adrenal burnout and my, my pain issues, so I wouldn't be surprised. So if you turn to page 155 in your training manual, um, it's, the answers are right there. Which of the following steps are recommended if someone has a significant detoxification reaction while using a combination of energy enhancer and YH patches. And significant, by the way, I wanted to mention, um, Dr. Steve before was talking about, you know, if somebody has a, a detox reaction, you know, you may want to back off on some of the uh, patches or using them as long. Um, for my patients, you know, I give them a, pretty much a heads up of what could happen. And I said, look, if you have a little sniffle here and there or, or a couple loose stools, or you're a little tired, you know, hydrate, keep going. But if you're miserable, you know, um, stop, you know, or, or just slow down, or give me a call, let me know, because uh, it's just part of the healing response sometimes, and um, it, it may not be possible to, to stop all of, all of that, and they might be willing to say, okay, well, I have a little headache here or there, but I'm not going to take pain medication, and it doesn't bother me that much, and it only lasted a couple of hours, so no big deal. A good uh, a remedy for people that are going through detox, whether they're using patches or not, is to use a buffered vitamin C powder and put a teaspoon, a heaping teaspoon in a, quart, in a liter of water with a lemon and then drink that over a period of a couple of hours. You can repeat it two or three or four times depending on how much uh, vitamin C you want to take. If you get too much, you'll get loose bowels and then you just back off the amount. But that will give you a regular dose of ascorbic acid into your system and it is a systemic general antitoxin. There are a number of books out on the antitoxin effects of vitamin C, and some of the research that's been done by uh, Dr. Thomas Levy, L-E-V-Y, has shown, and he reviewed hundreds of toxins, and he found all of the ones that he reviewed were, were all, uh, would all respond to do different doses of vitamin C. So that's a very good uh, tool to have in your cabinet is buffered vitamin C, and you want to use a buffered one, and then you put it in a, quart, a liter of water, you know, and just put a lemon in there, and you can sweeten it with a little bit of uh, honey or uh, a maple syrup, but not too much. You don't want to get a diabetes from the from the treatment, you know. But I would. St you can also use stevia. I would or not agave, use, maybe. Yeah, agave. agave. I wouldn't use any sugar, and I would not. I would definitely not use any aspartame or sucralose for various reasons. But that is something that I've used for many years with my patients is uh, I would have them drink a, a liter of vitamin C in the morning, maybe another one in the afternoon, another one in the evening. And some people would drink anywhere between two to five, and they would start feeling much better over time. And uh, this is before I even learned about patches. And I still recommend it for people when they email me and call me up occasionally as a, an approach to use with patches to get people through these difficult detox reactions. Over. Mm, that's great. Thank you, Dr. Steve. Well, I didn't know that um, you could, uh, I, I thought that once you put the, uh, the vitamin C in the water that you had to drink it pretty much right away. I didn't think it was still active over that many hours. You want to drink it in about two hours, but, you know, that, that's going to give your body, if you drink it over about two hours, two and a half, you're going to be able to keep your vitamin C levels up for three to four hours. Oh, okay. Good. And then you do great. another dose. If you get too much, you can look up vitamin C. To, T O bowel B O W E L tolerance on a Google search engine. There are hundreds of articles that explain this program of uh, different ways of using vitamin C, but it's vitamin C to bowel B O W E L tolerance. 
and that's if you really want to go to the higher doses. But most people don't have to go to the extreme. But if you start getting them on a regular dose of the buffered vitamin C, they do really well. And okay. the best one I found is called Vitality C. Uh, there's different. That's a that's an expensive one, but it's really the best one I found for. And you can look it up on the web and the benefits. It's called Vitality C. Is that the brand or is that that's the, the brand name? Brand name. Oh, okay, okay. I think I was using Perkin Metagenics, but uh, have you tried uh, those at all? The Vitality C also has ribose, which oh, is a nice. an unusual sugar that is, I think it's five carbon sugar that is actually used in DNA and RNA production as well as energy production. Energy production. So, so you're mm -hmm. actually getting uh, some support at a level of energy production at a cellular level outside the mitochondria. Wow, that has ribose. Well, that's great. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. Uh, Vitality C. Yeah, ribose they've used for congestive heart failure and um, fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's great that that's in combination. Cool. Okay, so for the, the question previously, so if you have somebody with a significant detox reaction, they're using, you know, uh, one of the white patches and the energy enhancers, um, what do you want to do if they have that? So here are the answers. A, increase hydration. B, remove the YH patch and leave the energy enhancers on. C, if the symptoms have not gone away after an hour, then remove the energy patches. D, and then consider reapplying the patches for shorter periods of time next time, and then increasing the length of application as tolerated, or E, all of the above. And I've got David, Tammy, and Heidi all saying E. Yes, yes. So pretty obvious answer, but um, we always want to do the hydration thing, and I think you probably, you know, know that in your sleep because it's like hydration, hydration, hydration. Um, and then in this case, the whole point was just to, just to know that you can do it in a stepwise way like this to take the would the, you the, mention the, mineralization the would you would you talk about mineralization for just a moment because we're also finding that's very important is not only hydration but mineralization and you mentioned one way of doing it with Himalayan uh, you want to talk about that for just a moment oh sure yeah I know this is this is not in your training manual so I didn't I didn't uh, put it in this slide um, but, um, you know, Dr. Steve has, and Dr. Quayle have mentioned in previous uh, product training calls that uh, when, when the person does not have the, the right amount of minerals on board, they can't really respond to the patches either because the patches, you know, require that. And so what, um, what I thought was really interesting is that uh, Himalayan crystal salt from um, the, the company, oh boy, company have changed names, but it's www.himalayancrystalsalt.com. They sold this book by this German lady who's a naturopath, and she talked about the importance of water, vibration, and salt in the Himalayan crystal salt, at least the brand that, that, that she talked about in the book, um, was tested to have over 84 ionic minerals in it, and that particular um, salt seems to basically help the body's, um, it's not so much sometimes the amount of minerals you have in your body, but that the body, the vibration basically, the vibration of the minerals is what actually tells the body to do several processes. For example, in the book it mentions, you know, um, that if you microwave cat food and feed it to the cats, they can eat all they want, but, but as, long, as you microwave the food and you feed it to the cats, even though it has the same amount of protein, the same amount of calcium, the same amount of magnesium, you know, in the cat food, all the cats died within three weeks and they died of starvation. Why? Because the vibrational components of all the vitamins, minerals, proteins, whatever it was in the cat food basically got messed up. So it is important for us to have some of the minerals, uh, the signatures of the minerals, otherwise our body processes can't work. And so the Himalayan crystal salt, you can actually use these big rocks of the salt and put it in a glass jar with a good quality water um, so that you don't dissolve all the rocks, but you get what's called a supersaturated solution. And you can take some of this solution after you've 
you soak them overnight um, every morning and that gives you kind of like your energy vibration mineral vibration for that entire day so if somebody's not hypertensive they can do like a whole teaspoon um, for everybody else probably like a quarter teaspoon that's what we've been recommending just so we know they get that vibration there Dr. there's Stevens, a uh, uh, yeah, that's excellent. You know, now she also need macro minerals. So she's talking about the trace minerals and the uh, vibrational aspects. But she also need the macro minerals, particularly magnesium, uh, a little bit of calcium, some zinc. But magnesium is one of the more important ones that you want to make sure because a significant percentage of the population, particularly if you're ill and you do not have kidney failure. If you have kidney failure, it's a different picture. But if you don't have kidney disease, uh, most people are under stress will lose magnesium during their in their urine, and athletes will use lose magnesium, calcium, and zinc in their sweat. And uh, I did a review of a Canadian athletic military team, uh, gosh, oh, six or seven years ago, and uh, we did lab work on them, and 67 percent were severely zinc deficient. Now these were the top athletes. Uh, on their team, the marathon runners, and uh, the majority of them were severely zinc deficient, and about half of them were magnesium deficient. Yet they would all they all were taking some magnesium and zinc. They just weren't taking enough for the amount that they were losing. So, not only does physical stress cause you to lose your minerals, but emotional stress will cause you to lose the minerals in your urine because emotional stress make you acidotic in your tissues and your body will buffer the urine with minerals from your bone as a way of controlling acid uh, acidosis in the body and so what happens is it starts you start mobilizing your minerals and over time this will also lead toward osteoporosis in a long-term case especially people that drink sodas they really have a problem with this so I don't want to go off on a complete a biochemical lecture here but uh, so it's important that you have a good program she's got a good approach with the trace minerals uh, to, tie, tie, to wrap this up there's also these I don't want to say you want to go up buy one I'm just going to use this as an example these infrared heat lamps from China they use a ceramic plate that has like 54 trace minerals in it and it's the vibrational energy that's coming off of that ceramic plate that has the beneficial effects with these infrared lamps. I did a review on them a few years ago. Uh, so I'm not saying you want to get one because you can have some beneficial effects, which is a lot cheaper with the Himalayan salt that she mentioned. Uh, but th that is important for the chemistry and physiology of the body is having those trace minerals available. Mm, nice. Well, that's, that's probably why I love those lamps when I get my acupuncture done. <laughs> In fact, I usually have my, my friend do both, like two, two of those lamps on me at the same time. Okay, let's move on here. Um, actually, I'm not going to show the, the video, but um, Lily will chat you the YouTube link to the video. And um, instead, what I'm going to have you do is uh, look at in, uh, page 171, 172 in your reciprocal pain protocol. You'll see that there is a chart there uh, of the, uh, I just want you to be familiar with this and then basically to memorize, uh, not, you don't know, memorize the chart, but memorize the technique, where you're going to use a reciprocal body part to patch with the ice wave patches. Now in this particular, um, in this particular one um, that, that Dr. Greenberg has written, the, they've recommended using the white on the right, tan on the left, or if the pain's on the right, using two tans. So a tan on the right and a tan on the left. Uh, but I can tell you, you pretty much just try whatever works. So, so let's, let's go by the book for the first case and uh, see where we, we get to. So you can take a look at your book to refer, so you can refer to your book. So this particular case is a 43-year-old woman who presents with pain in the left hip, so in the buttock area. So pain in the left hip. So using the reciprocal pain protocol, where would you put the first patch and what color would it be? 
So again, we're kind of going by the book here, just so you get used to this. So if you want to chat that, answer. Still waiting for an answer on that. Okay, Kim says uh, back of the shoulder or white. Okay, which shoulder? Okay, so Nothing wait yet. a second. Where would you put the first patch? That, that sounds like the reciprocal body part. So the first place you put the patch is where the pain is, yes? So what color do we normally use on the, on the pain spot? First. Here we go. Tim is saying tan on hip. Yes, so tan on the left hip, correct. Okay, so then the second patch would be on the right side and on the shoulder. That's correct, Tammy. And then that would be the white. Does everybody get that? If not, you know, raise your hand and we can clarify. So the first, in this case, the left hip tan patch over the pain area, so it's going to be a tan patch on the left buttock area, the left hip, and then you look on your chart and it looks like the shoulder area, there's a shoulder blade area, and because it's on the right side, the reciprocal body parts on the right side, um, we're going to put a white patch on the right shoulder. So in the instructions on the next page, if the pain has not fully subsided, what else could you do over that left hip? So you've got a white on the right shoulder and a tan on the left hip. Don't have any answers yet on that. They're busy finding where it says. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Heidi's uh, suggesting Ashi point. Okay, so, so the Ashi point... Um, Maybe you're referring to where they're talking about the, the reciprocal body parts or the shoulder blade area. There might be uh, a painful or a tight uh, point corresponding to the left hip, which is the original pain. So, yeah, you would want to put the white patch over that point on the shoulder. So, in, in your book, if, if the pain is not fully subsided. There we go. Tannel's got it, I think. She's got clock method to the hip. Yes, so you could use the clock method to the hip. So you can use a second white patch and do the whole clock method. And then if that doesn't work or that you feel like, oh, this is pretty good, we're getting close, but I want to see if I can get even better results, um, you could just flip them around and try it out. So, uh, so with Ice Wave, it's not as strict as with energy patches, where with energy patches we generally recommend white always goes on the right and tan on the left. I mean, you can, you can do it the other way, but I, I personally don't do it that way. I really like to stick to the white on the right thing, or if they're backwards, I, I, I correct them and then I put the patches on. Um, so, uh, but with the ice wave, you can be pretty flexible. So I've used ice wave all over the place. You know, tan on the right, white on the left. I mean, uh, and if it works, it works. And um, so you can be pretty creative. So let's try another case here. I'm going to go by the book first. So where would you put the first patch, and what color would it be? Tammy says white on wrist. Okay. So um, you can do that. Um, according to the book, we normally use the tan on the pain spot first. Um, but you might, you know, th there's no absolute right or wrong here. You can try whatever you want. I'm just sort of going by the book just so you know the, the protocol in the book, and then you can do it, you know, the way you want. So normally uh, it's the tan on the pain spot. Now maybe you're thinking it's 80-year-old woman. She probably has old arthritis. It's probably a cold pain, so we should use the white patch. You know, that is completely, uh, you know, a, a good thought. Um, but if somebody just sprained their wrist and it's a hot uh, kind of injury, a, a recent injury, I would probably start with the tan patch. So tan patch on the right wrist. So if we use the tan patch on the right wrist, according to the protocol, where do we put the second patch? What's the location? 
How about tan on left ankle, Society? Mm -hmm. Yep, tan on left ankle, that's correct, according to the protocol. And then um, if the pain is not fully subsided, what, what are your other options? Nothing back just yet on that. Clock the wrist. Yep, you can do clock on the wrist. You can certainly, if that doesn't work, you can know, also switch the, the, the patch colors. And um, I know Dr. Quadra says she, she loves this protocol. She uses it very successfully. And on the video, um, uh, I also demonstrate uh, patch stacking. So Dr. Dennis Lovesine came up with that where you can stack a glutathione patch, stick it right on top of the white patch, of the, the ice wave patch. And, um, and, and Dr. Quala said she's even used the carnosine patch over the tan. Patch. Now, I haven't, you know, you can just chime in and, and let us know what your, what your results have been doing that. But I do demonstrate putting the glutathione on the white ice wave patch in the reciprocal pain protocol YouTube video. So you can look at that at your leisure. Okay, any questions on this? My audio cut out for a minute, so I apologize if we covered this, but um, Heidi's asking, what about putting a white patch on the belly button? Could you do that? This, Instead of the other patch? Oh, that's not that's not wrong. Are you talking about the glutathione? Or, or a regular she just said white, so so she might be oh. referring to glutathione there. But um, yeah. yeah, I think if, if the pain doesn't doesn't subside, um, would that be? Yeah. So if you, yeah, yeah. So if, if you if you've done the reciprocal pain protocol and um, the first thing we should always do, I think, is is the clock protocol. If that doesn't work, or for whatever reason you intuitively feel you want to do the reciprocal pain protocol first, that's fine. Um, after you do that and you get some pain relief, but maybe not all. So you went from a 7 to a 1, and maybe you want to get rid of that last little bit. Um, then I would add in the glutathione, and that would be a good place to put it, is in the CV line, so the front, in the center line of the body. Kind of a safe, safe spot to put it in. Or you could just, for test reasons, you could just have them hold it in the right hand, which a lot of people do as well, just to see whether it would make a difference. Any other questions on this? Okay. And I don't know, uh, Lily, maybe you know this answer, but, um, you know, people that were watching the video asked, is there some sort of book that the chart came from that I could refer them to? I, I certainly don't want to copy everything out of the book, uh, out of the training manual, but they wanted to know if there was a textbook or something where they can find out what all the reciprocal body parts are. I'd have to refer back to um, Dr. Greenberg on that. I think she did okay. have a source for it, but I don't recall off the top of my head. Um, okay, yeah, that, that would probably that be was. good for me to know what that is. Yeah, so I can, I can just share people to or point them to that, to that resource. Sure, I'll get you the, uh, the uh, resources on that. Fabulous, thank you. Okay, all right. So a couple of uh, tips and bits of wisdom to share before we open up for general questions. Um, one thing that I have found a very, very uh, let's just say hard lesson to learn for myself, so I wanted to share that with you, is that, um, you know, I, I'm one of these bleeding heart types that I just want everybody to feel good. I just want everybody to be happy and, and you know, having a happy life, and uh, I think probably comes from my childhood experience of, of having a mother with, with clinical depression and me trying to be her counselor at age four or five, you know. So, uh, so what happens is that some of us have this sort of Mother Teresa thing going, and uh, we want, you know, people to be better. We want people to be pain-free. We want people to have a better life. But you know what? Sometimes they don't want that for themselves. I mean, they might want it consciously, but they may not really, they may have other unconscious reasons why they need to keep their illness or keep their pain. So one of the pitfalls of being a healthcare provider is codependency. And so you can't want for someone more than what they want for themselves because you're going to burn out, which I did, you know, years ago, um, and y you're just going to get resentful. So it's better to just let people have whatever they want to have, even if it's not conscious, um, and, um, you know, move on to the next person who really does want it. So when we do pain relief 
presentations, it's always very interesting to me now that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll pre pretty much get, you know, 95, if not 100% of people out of pain in the room, and then people just, you know, some people are like, well, I don't know, I'll have to think about it, you know. <laughs> You know, and it's not that they don't necessarily have money or to buy it. Sometimes it's a, it's that issue, but a lot of times, it's like, well, I'll have to think about it. I'll have to read some more research. It's like, okay, so let me see. You want to read some more research because it worked on you? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, in fact, I had one lady one time, and she was the doctor's wife. The doctor, okay, the regular MD here, he's not even a holistic MD, brought his wife, who was in chronic pain, to our seminar. And she was the only person who did not uh, volunteer to, to get patched. In fact, um, later on when I called her and just asked how, how it was for her, she said, well, I was looking for something more official, like something with more you know, data, something more scientific. And um, she didn't even want to try it. You know, she didn't even want to try it. So clearly, you know, she on some level needs to have her pain. And, um, and it's okay. We just let that, you know got to let those people go. And then a quick business tip, um, what we found is that the bigger your own energy is, the more clients and money you will attract. So use the patches regularly yourself, you know, be the happiest person you can be, be, you know, be joyful, um, be open, be loving, uh, that is probably the biggest magnet to attract all the same type, types of vibrations to you, and it's a heck of a lot easier way to do business, and it's a lot funner, too. Um, and the other thing is, is I'm a big fan of Kim Claver. Uh, I think her, her customer program is ex excellent, and I highly encourage you to buy the customer enchilada program in your back office and listen to it and do it and, you know, get your 45-second scripts written, your seven-second seven scripts, and practice, practice, practice. And um, that, that has completely changed uh, the way I've approached uh, network marketing. It's helped so much. Um, and I'm not afraid anymore to, to talk to people about, about this, this stuff, whereas I used to be. So those are my two little um, tips, business tips for today. And so anybody uh, open up for some questions about uh, the topics for today or clarifications you would like to? Dr. Karen, I'm going to go back um, a little bit here to a question that came in earlier but was a bit off topic at the time. Um, this is in regards to tips with using the SP6 patches. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best protocol for detox that this person can use with the SP6 patches for weight loss? So um, I think they're looking for a um, patch protocol that would combine SP6 and would be particularly good for detox. Anything come to mind for that? Um, well, I would always start with the, the, the protocol, the SP6 complete protocol as it is first, and do that for a good month. Um, and assuming, you know, you're getting results. If you're not, then yeah, you might want to try something else. But, you know, having the SP6 complete on the left, the glutathione on the matching point on the right, and then choosing the, of the three points that they, they recommend, choosing the one that works the best for that particular person. And then if you have access to it uh, here, you know, like here in, in the U.S., um, then having them do the whole program, you know, with the detox one, detox two, the, the you know, the Makai juice, uh, that sort of thing, uh, at least for detox, would be my recommendation. Uh, I don't use the meal replacement as much because um, I, don't, I don't eat soy personally, um, but if somebody uh, really likes soy, you know, non-GMO soy, then, then they can try that as well. But the detox bit is important, I believe, for the weight loss. And, and I'm really glad you asked this question because I meant to mention it earlier and I did not. Uh, I had a couple of uh, people in the SP6 Complete study one in particular was a friend of mine, and she, like me, had gone through a bout of adrenal fatigue and was using energy enhancer patches very successfully. But because she was in the study, she was asked just to use the SP6 and the glutathione. And she noticed over the month that her energy started waning, and she did not lose the weight that we expected her to lose. And I think she was one of these people that really needed the energy enhancers on board at the same time as the SP6 complete and the glutathione. So um, I would actually use, you know, especially for someone you suspect has, um, has sort of chronic fatigue issues or stressed out a lot or has a lot of, 
you know, weight over their belly area. You know, that's generally um, high cortisol levels, high stress over time. It collects in the belly, so they look like an apple, you know, where their fat is. So for those people, it might be good to have them on the energy patches either first or at the same time, uh, if they can stand all of that uh, patching um, at the same time as the SP6 and the glutathione. And then I'd use carnosine um, uh, on the weekend. So uh, SP6 and glutathione five days a week with the energy patches and then two days a week the glutathione with or without the energy patches. So it's pretty patch intensive, but, but that's basically what I did personally and, and really liked it. So hopefully that answers that question. I'm so glad you asked that because I was going to mention about using the energy enhancers um, and how important that is for some people while they're detoxing. Okay. Dr. Karen, I don't see anything else uh, coming up here. So I think uh, you probably address a lot in the lecture. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I, I really want to appreciate Lily for uh, you know for you um, uh, you know taking charge here, so <laughs> helping me with the, the questions, and also Dr. Steve. It's also much much more entertaining when Dr. Steve's on, and his great wisdom. I really appreciate him for that, and I appreciate all of you uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this training, and excited for you to share it. You share your you know, new knowledge and your wisdom and all the stuff you're going to discover and pass along to us uh, in your uh, experience with LifeWave um, and helping people from all over the world. And I know we have um, advanced practitioner training sites, so, you know, people from all over, so it's really exciting for us to have so many people interested. So go and go forth and teach. You know, and, and, and Dr. Karen, we want to thank you for doing a really excellent job on this tonight. Thank you so much. Oh, that was great, my Dr. Pleasure. Karen. My pleasure. It's very fun. Very fun. So thanks, everyone. And, uh, well, I guess, you know, until next time. And, and uh, if you have some time, to check out, uh, check out my blog or you can Facebook me, Karen Can. And um, I will uh, – actually, my blog is quantum-antiaging. So quantum-antiaging.com. Quantum-antiaging. I'll chat that right now. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, so, Dr. Steve, are you still there? I am. Yes, I okay. am. Yeah, is it? Uh, I wanted to, uh, can I post your detox remedy with the buffered vitamin C? Oh, powder sure. My blog? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, that will be really right. helpful. And you can go team. to thomaslevymd.com, and you can look up his book on toxins and vitamin C, or you can look it up on Amazon.com. Okay. But his website's thomaslevymd.com. Thomaslevymd.com. Okay, great. Awesome. Great. Thanks. Okay. Good night, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dr. Karen. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.